Welcome to Find Out Friday! So it's not Friday, myself and Sean are doing this during our free time. It is, in fact, a week in advance of this launch. So we're still in the creative process. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're still in the week ago process. Oh, hi, Miranda. So we have, our guest is on the line with us right now. (laughs) Miranda is adorable. Find out Friday. Find out Friday, Miranda. See, Miranda's so excited. She's coming in to see what's going on before everyone else. (laughs) Anyway, we are here a week in advance of Find Out Friday, and the video isn't quite finished. So we had our guest on. It's the first time myself and Sean are meeting this person because he reached out to me, and I didn't at the time know who he was, which is a bit of a you know faux pas. I should probably do my research. You know, someone sends me an email, I should like type that into the Googles, find out who I'm talking to. No, I'm just like leave it to the universe. The right people will come. I'm so chill about all of this, and we heard the tracks, and we loved it, and we said yes. And then it turns out there is a massive fan of this person that lives in my home. And he literally has been starstruck all week. Like he was like, what do you mean you're going to talk to this person? Because my son is like a huge, massive fan of a band that this person is in. So we were like, oh God, I didn't even know that at the time. And then me and Keanu are having this beautiful battle of things, you know. So we just watched a short shit bit of the video that you're currently creating. And it's so exciting to see the process as you go along because it's completely different than what we usually do. Usually do, we send the video you to each artist beforehand and we're like okay this is what we want to do do you like it what's your feedback but no this time it's just let's do the interview first the process is still happening boom find out friday before everyone's eyes yeah i think yeah it's it's interesting to mix it up i mean this is uh the fourth uh uh uh, release so and the fourth interview the fourth find out friday and the supersonic sand uh, guest is hiding away down there in the OBS system. Uh, you and I can see him, but not anybody else can. Uh, so it's uh, yeah, it's, exi- it's exciting. Uh, really great guy. Uh, amazingly uh, up and coming, um, incredible artist. Um, um, and uh, I suppose for me, um, the process, the collaborative process that the three, the three of us go, or e- each three of us in each chapter goes through it's been different each time and this time it's kind of like uh we're all we're, we're kind of behind a few days because as, as you said like we normally would have the video uh completed that the three of us uh can have a, a, a kind of a, a bit of a kind of like a, an after party with the interview and we know what it is like so but at this stage um we don't really know i did give you a sneak preview both of you there but i suppose more importantly people will be wanting to know who is our guest for find out friday yes who is our guest for find out friday so we are about to introduce our guest for find out friday our guest is often on these beautiful headphones that my son wears especially to listen to his band okay He is just absolutely in love with the band. But now we're going to meet one of the people in the band, which I think is super exciting. So one of Ireland's most up and coming bands, like literally they're being talked about everywhere, sends me a track and I'm like, well, and then then I find out and then my son is like, mom, like, you're just what are you doing? Like, how do I not like, how do you know all these people? And like, I think his head will explode after he sees this interview. But anyway, I would like to welcome our fourth collaborator, the wonderful, incredible Andy Killian. Hello. <laughs> hey. That was a wonderful introduction. <laughs> Thank you very much. So how does it so feel how, how to love, like to be loved by a five-year-old? Like, <laughs> but it was, it's only now in my head, I'm like, Oh, that's why, you know, there's always listeners on Spotify. And oh, that's that's where all those streams are coming from, you know? <laughs> no, that, no, it's so flattering. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's, that's it's just so nice. <laughs> Very he's, cute. He's so cute. Like uh, his yeah. favorite line in Salami, which is his favorite song of yours, is... <laughs> Salami, I think I lost my phone. And he literally will say that to anyone he meets in the street and people to be looking at us going, what's that child? It's like, there's a band called Pretty Happy and my son is addicted to their music. And 
it, trust me that's that's actually a lyric of a song no no really it, it actually is it's it's not just made up no <laughs> yeah i think that's a whole separate issue in itself <laughs> <laughs> but we're we're not here to talk about pretty happy we're here to talk about you and your individual magic and the tracks that you can create by yourself because that's effectively one of the things that's very special like it's great being in a band like it must be wonderful but at the same time you are a creative force upon yourself like you know mm. so this song that you created for the pro for for the project talk to us about how you feel about it how did it come about and then we'll talk about the video and what we have planned and Oh yeah. Um, well, I suppose it, it it was more just in response to I I must have seen I think it just popped up on Facebook. It was someone must have liked the video and you were announcing announcing the the project, and I just thought it was it sounded class. And at the time, you know, I I I make a lot of compositions for different media, so you know, kind of short films, that kind of thing. Um, even I like to kind of make my own little short things and then you know write music to something i love i love the idea of like what music can do for something that's already made but anyway yeah when when i saw that this was being announced i was like oh class that is that is something i've literally never heard of before sand art <laughs> and uh my god yeah i just said oh i'd love to be part of this and yeah the song itself was just um i, I i've been experimenting so much with um old tape recorders recently and um i got a, an old uh clarinet off of uh sheena crowley from crowley's um so she very generously gave me that clarinet and i was figuring out how to play it um and in addition to that i was kind of messing around with the, the, the violin so just between the two of them i was just kind of making like these cassette tape loops um, I then just using loops, then brought it into the software, and then just messed around with the pitch. So uh, yeah, it's just lots of kind of analog and digital, in you know, intermingling that kind of thing. Um, but actually, yeah, it's. I it, it was funny. I I gave you such an ambient track at first, and then you guys said, "Oh yeah, you, could you make it a bit more upbeat?" And then. I was like, what does that, what is upbeat? I, I can only write really sad songs. <laughs> so, so I think that's, uh, so, th th you know, we were talking earlier about uh, like trying to figure out, oh, is there a bit of sorrow in, in it? But it, it sounds positive, but <laughs> I think that's where that came from. But um, yeah, I just had loads of fun making that. Yeah. And thanks for uh, involving me. Like, it's just brilliant because every single collaborator that's coming to us has a completely different sound and a completely different process and each song seems to come from a different part of creativity and then what Sean does just blows me away like you know he just takes the song listens to it so many times and he's like I think this is what it means to me and that's effectively what we're doing you know we're merging his art with your art but then he's also creating a completely different artscape like I think that's mm. kind of the soul of this project is that we're really really merging ourselves into the music and and really trying to create something so special and different in a time where music can't really be enjoyed in a normal way so we're trying to give an emotive like video yeah. like that gives something to everyone because everyone deserves it right now more than anything so we're so grateful that you involved yourself in the project and rendered us two beautiful songs and yes the first one was too somber for what we needed <laughs> but the, the second one was bang on yeah. oh well thank and you actually, yeah. I, I, so, and, and i'm uh, I, i'm delighted to hear that well it's not that was, uh, like the clarinet and the violin and like uh you know the tape uh, machine and that kind of thing i'm so happy to to like because I've listened to it, as I said, like probably about seven hundred times at this stage, cutting the video together. Um, it's like uh, you know, and I and I was kind of like, is that like one of those pieces of software where that clarinet is just like been made by electronically, magically with pixel whatever's? Uh, but wow, it's an actual clarinet and an actual violin and an actual tape deck. That's just uh, that just gives me because uh, this is our first time meeting Andy, so for me it's like uh, you know, and, and the project. It, you could say our collaboration is only, you know, maybe halfway through or whatever. I mean, okay, you your track is down, your track is mastered, but it's for me to kind of immerse myself um, in it. And 
as Rebecca was saying, <clears throat> you know, uh, like what, what is very evident, and I think when people uh, get to see, get to see it and hear it tomorrow, uh, when we release it on Saturday at eight pm, uh, is there is that element of the somber, uh, you know. Uh, this, there is that somberness in it, so I mean, it, like, but but yet it's uplifting. So I'm trying to kind of adjust the uh, the monochromeness or the black and whiteness or the colorness <laughs> of how I represent. Like, it, it's, it's it's actually quite a tricky piece to uh, to edit a video to because it's got this amazing build up to this halfway point, which is just like explodes, uh, you know. So so that, that, that like uh, when we did the piece with Wob there a few weeks back, uh, there was a kind of a trance scene. Uh, with, a, with a kind of a cloud sequence going on, and it kind of then there was a trance scene. So actually, I think it'd be fair to reveal that we've got a, a kind of a kind of a fire uh, fire element, the element of fire. And since uh, since the bike queen here uh, saved the family on her street there last week uh, in a fire, uh, burst into the house and uh, dragged people out. Uh, uh, she, she won't want me to say that, but uh, so, so, but anyway, there, there is that element of like so the somberness is. Even though you might think of a beach and, you know, the guy comes along, draws this picture uh, and it miraculously appears. But yet at the end of the day, even if you look carefully, maybe there's something, there's an undercurrent of fire. In fact, there's an entire cliff on fire in this film. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's yeah, just it's amazing, just honestly. Just um, amazing, honestly yeah. I think the... I think the how temporary the art the art is is amazing like it, i remember looking at one of the first videos where you were introducing the concepts and it is it is fascinating how you know you're you're spending so much time and you know giving so much of yourself to create art out of sand and then to see the tide come in and just take it away and to be okay with that that's a it's a it's a really interesting process and i think even like having that like tape analog thing as well the way that like i i only have like a couple of tapes so i usually overwrite over them so it's just like that stuff's kind of gone as well it's just kind of temporary and it's a, it's yeah. a, a nice kind of halfway point between that nearly <laughs> yeah i love people that are willing to do impermanent art like so it means mm. that you're creating because you love creating there's no creation yeah, from true. ego okay mm. so you're creating because you need to not because you need to be seen i love that about sean and I love that about using analog tapes now that you put it that way. <laughs> yeah, but that's it. Yeah, I suppose it comes back to that expression, doesn't it? Where not being goal orientated and just worrying about your own expression and, you know, and if and if you got paid for how much you could express yourself, then, you know, that, that would be a lot easier, wouldn't it? <laughs> Judging by my Instagram feed, I would be incredibly wealthy. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me for me as well like the um like I, I i've been working on the sand for 10 years and i had a, recently had a, a retrospective film and so it's kind of like for me that was kind of a turning point like this project is the first project really uh, apart from commissions and things that i've uh, be become completely um consumed in shall we say like so the supersonic sand thing for me is a new uh it's a new direction and a new kind of uh like I've said it before, like uh, Rebecca here, the Vi Queen, is, is basically like my musical mentor in many ways because, like, you know, uh, I didn't ha even have a Spotify account until December uh, of this year. Like so many other people during the lockdown, you know, we, we, we uh, feel like we need to consume uh, content and so on. Um, so uh, now I, I've always been a fantastic, a huge fan of, uh, of music. But now for me, the experimental part for me is trying you know there's going to be 12 attempts but like each attempt trying to connect what is inside your mind with what's inside my mind and what's you know that works with the bike queen and this kind of three-way kind of conversation about how how to connect the art forms in a kind of a, a way that's never been done before so that for me is uh, i always like to kind of challenge myself beyond and same i suppose with you with the with the clarinet and the violin and the tape decks and the, you know the, that whole kind of like well, if you put these three things together, what will happen if you mix that and, and output it in a different way? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, but um, I yeah, I did I did want to say something else about that, but I'm just my train of thought has just gone. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm very familiar with that feeling and uh, sensation. I call that having a brain fart. It's a uh, it's it's one of those things. You know, it's like pew. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I, th I think actually what I wanted to say was, yeah, it's amazing how it's 
you know you start you start off you you created that piece of art having no idea how like the 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 final result of being a video with like fire being underlaid and how you'll have to interpret your piece of art as something else because someone interprets it differently you know what i mean um and it is it is so nice having like especially in in the lockdown you know like before you could just meet up with someone and you know you could sing over someone else playing the guitar and then that was enough kind of fulfillment of uh, expression but then now you're just kind of oh how can i collaborate with people if i'm not allowed to go over to their houses and stuff so this was this has been so and like connecting you know i suppose 12 it, it's 12 um 12 uh musicians or artists and yeah and the two of you you know that's like 14 unique different <laughs> relationships going on yeah, so it's yeah no uh, across it as well so it's uh and tell us about your um the, the name you have on it andy the Mor- morphemus is it I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's go back and double check that. But uh, yeah, no, I, th- I think it. I don't know how I stumbled upon the term, but I think it kind of summed up summed up uh, the my own view of like the the project really nicely was how it, it basically it's the prefix prefixes in front of words that make them into other words i'm pretty sure that's what it is or or else it's a word that's made up of smaller words i think that i think that's actually it it's a word that's made up of smaller words but i just thought oh how you have one word that can just mean one thing and then having this tiny little syllable in front of it it can have you know the opposite or a similar meaning or it can make it more intense it can reduce it the you know the sensation of the the word itself you know um and i just thought yeah it just how that's almost like in the sand itself how you know something's there temporarily and then it's just gone um but anyway yeah like <laughs> i can't fully remember why i chose that but i think i'm yeah. going on and trying to trying to talk myself out of that one <laughs> no it's a beautiful name and it is very fitting to the project in that way it is true that when you like look at words and like one of my favorite things like as a linguist like I'm a polyglot I speak five languages so dissection of words is incredibly important to me um so like I love that about words that you can add something and then it transforms the whole entire thing so you're right using that word for a project that will literally not only change your song but change Sean's artwork and then create a third piece of art like it is mind-blowing like it's insane that you know it's just such a groundbreaking project I love being part of it and watching everyone create such beauty out of just such such a unique thing like yeah I I think that's what I meant yeah (laughs) Yeah. no that's really well said yeah Yeah. oh sorry I keep interrupting Viewers, it's brilliant. There is actually a rabbit. There is actually a rabbit in the video. Uh, well, he's not an actual rabbit. He's he's like he kind of metamorphosizes, uh, to use Andy's word, or morphoses. I, I kind of see that. I I kind of took it from what Andy titled the, the music track as kind of like this kind of like changing thing that evolves. You know, in a linguistic sense, yeah, it's how you reduce a word or whatever, but. Uh, for me, this rabbit appears in the sand art. Now, it's completely impromptu drawing. It, it didn't have any plans or drawings and no, no notion in advance. It's just me walking around uh, creating this kind of like slightly handed uh, drawings, kind of left and right, similar. And, but this this rabbit, this rabbit's head does appear in the video. So not everybody can see it, of course. Not everybody can see it. Yeah, so we're going to call the Artscape Morphemes rabbit so they will have the name of the song and sean's artscape in a completely different art form and that's really exciting and that's going to come out tomorrow night at 8 p.m on sean's social media platform so you have that to look forward to everybody you know is there anything you guys would like to add to the interview before we stop recording yes yes i would like to say how was the field in Glown Torn, Andy? <laughs> it's been well looked after, yeah. Yeah. We discovered yeah. uh 
that <laughs> that Sean was out camping in my vicinity. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was uh, madly coincidental. I, I was describing where I lived as, you know, an unheard place. But yeah, a nice little connection is going on there. Lovely spot, lovely spot. Not only has he camped there, he walked to there. And it took seven days. <laughs> <laughs> so people watching this at home are like, my God, the dynamic of all these interviews is just so different. It's because myself and Sean are lunatics. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, a big shout out to my friends on the walk from A to B that also walked there with me from Alahees all the way through uh, Glantown on our, on our way back from uh, a few years ago. So hi, walk from A to B team. Hey guys. <laughs> Glantown, great field. Sorry, I think my internet connection has has just dropped really badly. Sorry about that. <laughs> You're okay, Andy. But uh, but thanks so much for um for you know using the song and you know it's, it was a wonderful experience so thanks a lot you know it's it's great to collaborate with such you know interesting and talented people thanks a million andy absolute pleasure thank you so much andy so with that we're going to stop recording very shortly but i urge you to not only follow tomorrow's video which is going to be amazing and be rabbits fire and a song that is both upbeat and somber by andy killian but if you haven't heard of pretty happy uh for instance put on salami after this interview and understand why there's a five-year-old who is not going to believe that any of this happened in Waterford because it is honestly one of the coolest up-and-coming bands in Ireland right now and you'd be doing yourself a massive disservice by not following those guys right now. Oh, geez, thanks. <laughs>